Uh, I'm Sam Nichols, coincidentally also a PhD student here at Brisbane, and I'm here to talk to you about my bioinformatics-based project, which is whether we can get antibiotics out of cows. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, this is a cow, and if you take a cross-section of its digestive system, it looks a little bit like this. Uh, my area of interest is here, the rumen, the first and largest of the cow's four stomachs, and it's the first stop for food that the cow swallows. What's so interesting about the stomach? Well, for every milliliter that is in the rumen, there's between 20 and 50 billion bacteria, uh, which is a lot. Um, and those bacteria are under constant competition for access to the resources that the cow has swallowed. And under such competition, they'll release antimicrobials that will kill off other bacteria, which is useful for us because that's the sort of thing that we like to do with antibiotics in our own bodies to fend off bacterial infection. So if we could extract those, put them into antibiotics and save the world, that would be great. And we could go home for lunch. But unfortunately, it's not that easy because we're not even sure what all the species of bacteria in the rumen actually are. Uh, one way you can actually find that out is through genomic sequencing. Um, there's more information about this in your handouts, but I'll try and briefly go through it here. Uh, if you're interested in the DNA sequence or genetic blueprint of a particular organism or an unknown species like Rhea, you'll take a sample of it, amplify the sample so you have a lot of it, shear it up so you have billions and billions of tiny pieces, and you put this into a sequencing machine in a lab somewhere. Software called assemblers will then take the output of the sequencing device and try and get you that assembly back. And the way I like to think of it is a bit like a puzzle. So it takes all these pieces and assembles a jigsaw. But that's great for one organism. We've got the DNA sequence of one organism. But what happens if we have thousands of different species inside of our rumen? We need metagenomic sequencing. This, uh, the, the, the way of doing it is, is similar, between antibody shear and sequence. But notice now that instead of having just DNA from one organism, it could be thousands. Uh, you can also take metagenomic sequences from anywhere where there's lots of bacteria, such as soil, your skin, or aquariums. And again, you go through amplifying, shearing, and sequencing. The problem we have here is that, for example, this blue species is highly represented, this orange species is underrepresented, and when you get to shearing, there's more blue than orange, which may mean that your rare orange species might get lost in your data. So this is where I come in. Part of my PhD is to work on assembly methods for this very thing. Uh, if we use traditional uh, single organism assembly methods, you end up with an assembly like this, which is a massive piece of DNA featuring parts from all of the species that you've sequenced, but it doesn't mean anything. It's one assembly of what? It's not a particular species, but it's also more than one species. So we want to try and extract individual genomic sequences from all of the species that appear in our sample, and more importantly, verify them as well, which is something that doesn't really happen at the moment. So why should we care? Well, in case you've missed the news, we're going through a bit of an antibiotic crisis. Things like MRSA are becoming more commonplace because bacterial resistance is increasing. Now, we haven't found a new class of antibiotics for quite some time, barring one recent paper that's come out that still needs to be uh, tested properly in the laboratory. So if we could do this and extract antibiotics and use them for our own health, that would be great. Uh, there's also other things inside the room that are potentially useful to us that are a bit outside the scope of this talk, but those are also useful too. So if there's any questions, I'll be happy. Are you talking about like, just a new type of antibiotic? Potentially could be hundreds. Um, preliminary, a preliminary analysis by a previous PhD student, they've already started assembling a database of these antimicrobial peptides. Um, some of them might be really useful, some of them might not be. So the idea is we're expecting to find a lot and we want to test as many of them in the lab as possible and see which ones could actually be candidates for proper antibiotics. I suppose you use a function-driven analysis when you verify the antibiotics that you actually discovered. So do you have specific, specific targets to carry on that? Or um, well, the, the verification in the laboratory of the actual stuff that we find is being done by another PhD student, and it's also being done in collaboration with Bangor, and she's only just started, so we'll have to Okay, thank you. So have you got copyright? for some of the images that we've used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of them are freely available, apart from this one, which is from the Amherstwith website. Mm. Can I get a copy of the jigsaw puzzle? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.